Greetings, fellow Northern Indoor enthusiasts. I'm Anthony Trombetta, and welcome to My Parents' Basement. This is a new show on Community TV. We're pretty excited to get started. My co-host, cultured Chris Ford. What do we got on the show? Well, we're going to be bringing you news and reviews on movies, video games, comic books, tech, and even some sweet munchies to wash it all down. Well, there's fresh snow on the hills all across the north right now. That means it's time to close the curtains, fill up the Diet Pop fridge, and head down into the basement. As Ned Stark says, Chris, Winter is coming. But first up, we've got a rundown on what's hot in a little segment we like to call The Gauntlet. Groovy. If you're a fan of smart movies, and you're a fan of horror movies, have I got something for you. The Cabin in the Woods, out on Blu-ray right now. Directed by Drew Goddard, this is the guy that did Cloverfield, which was a great, great monster movie. But it also has Joss Whedon stink all over it. A lot of characters from Buffy, a lot of actors are in the movie. This is going to be the smartest horror movie you will ever see. We should split up. Yeah, good idea. Really? Have you ever wanted to actually see a badass science fiction style robot in real life? Well, a company named Boston Dynamics has created a four-legged robot, and it's faster than the fastest human ever recorded. In fact, it clocks in at 28.3 miles an hour. Now, it's a little expensive right now, but soon enough the U.S. military will be buying these things and chasing down terrorists over sand dunes. Just you wait. If you're a fan of classic computer RPGs like the Baldur's Gate series or Planescape Torment, I got some great news for you. A lot of developers who used to work for BioWare and Black Isle, guys who were behind stuff like this, Knights of the Old Republic, they have a new project coming out, Project Eternity. It's a Kickstarter project, they're starting to get some money rolling in, and they hope to have this out by Christmas. It's going to be a classic, old school RPG in that Baldur's Gate style you know and love. And if you don't, try it. You'll love it. All right, say what you will about the Transformers movies. I'm a big fan of them. Even though Michael Bay doesn't do everything the way everybody wants, I like him. Now, it's been known for a while that he's been recasting the humans in Transformers 4. And that's fine. I don't care what humans are in it. And nobody goes to see a movie called Transformers to see humans anyways. Now, I'm a little worried about Transformers 4. Hasbro has said that they want to recast the Transformers for Transformers 4 because the toy sales weren't that great after the last movie. Who would just see Transformers without Optimus Prime? I don't know. Yeah, it is pretty goofy to have a Transformers movie and not have like Optimus Prime and Megatron and stuff. It's garbage. Yeah, yeah but question is, Chris, <laughs> you're still going to go see Transformers 4, aren't you? Well, yeah, I gotta see. It's, it's like a train wreck. You can't look away. <laughs> All right, Cabin in the Woods. I saw it. Yeah. This movie is awesome. I can't recommend it enough. I've seen it like three times now. It's got humor. It's got like it's horror, even a little tinge of sci-fi to it. The thing that's great about it is that it's a meta horror. It's a horror talking about horror movies, but on such a deeper level than the Scream series tried to do. Oh, Cabin yeah. in the Woods really does it right. Don't let anyone ruin this for you, ever. <laughs> now the robot, the robot thing it kind of has me worried because I know for a long time I've been banking on a zombie apocalypse but it sounds like we're heading towards a robot apocalypse because if we have robot running you know robot cheetahs running around attacking people there's only a certain amount of time before like you know Skynet turns on and then we're toast yeah and that's a terrifying prospect but we just have to program the AIs with those three laws of robotics that Isaac Asimov came up with I saw the movie it didn't work <laughs> out so well well, you know, Will Smith had an adventure, so... Oh, hell no! Alright, we can talk about zombies and cabins and robots forever, but now it's time to talk comics with Anthony. So I'm a fan of DC Comics. I've been one ever since I was a kid. But last year, DC Comics decided to wipe the slate clean of all their storylines and legacy characters and start from scratch. So all the legacy storylines that have been building for six decades, they scrapped it entirely and started from zero. DC's New 52 has been running for a year now. So you take all your favorite characters you know and love, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Green Lantern, but now it's all new. They have new storylines. They have new relationships. 
I don't know what's going on anymore. It's driving me completely nuts. Like they can't even go back to any of these past stories because they're starting from new. The new way that they're going now to draw in these new readers, it isn't working. Well, it can't be all bad, right? I mean, these guys have been doing this for a long time, so they've got to be doing some things right. Well, it's they are doing some things right. There's a couple of storylines that haven't really changed much. Green Lantern is sailing along as if nothing ever happened, which is great. That's my favorite comic. Batman hasn't changed all that much. It's still going strong. New stuff I really like, The Flash. The artwork in The Flash is incredible. The way they describe the super speed powers is a lot of fun. It's a new take. One that really surprised me was Wonder Woman, which I never was a fan of before, but now the artwork is incredible. The storyline makes sense. So they did fix some things, just the things they fixed very small percentage to the stuff that's completely broken. Superman still get affected by kryptonite the same? So far, yes, they haven't really introduced the new version of Kryptonite, so who knows, Chris, but take a look at that costume. Iconic costume. Absolutely, it's the image of Superman that everyone knows. That's what they changed. First, they young sized him, so now he's in his early 20s, and he wears this kind of armored suit, invulnerable Kryptonian thing. So it's like a newer, hipper Superman. Yeah, and Lois Lane is out of the picture. He's flying solo now. She's a reporter. Prince it's, dead anyway, right? That's what I liked about them. They were a couple. You know, she's a normal reporter. He's a superhero. He smooches her, flies off, and saves the world. But he's younger now. He can play the scene. He's got powers. <laughs> he can use them. Right, right. Yeah, you know, bar tricks. Okay, now getting into the stuff I really like, video games. Today I'm talking about Quantum Conundrum. This game is available on the PlayStation Network for PS3 and Xbox Live Arcade for the Xbox 360. This game is a bit of a spiritual successor to a couple games called Portal and Portal 2, which were puzzle games. And this is a physics-based first-person puzzle game. It's awesome. You get to change the dimensional properties of things with the fantastic little glove that you get in the game. You can make things super light, super heavy. You can reverse gravity and slow down time. And you have to use all these in conjunction with one another to get from one area to the next. The cool thing about this game is it's loaded with style and humor. It's narrated by your mad scientist uncle who's voiced by John Delancey, the guy that played Q in Star Trek The Next Generation, who's hilarious. I've just become a rather interesting lab assistant, though his indiscriminate appetite is a bit of a hindrance. They even got the theme song to the game to be written and performed by the singer from the President of the United States of America. I don't know if anybody remembers them, but he's still alive. <laughs> All right, now that you've uh, had a bit of time to play with us, Anthony, what are, what are your thoughts on this game? Uh, well, honestly, I've n I'm not a big fan of puzzle games, but this one is actually pretty easy to pick up and get the hang of. And I like the fact that you're not just uh, in a straight, you're not in like in a locked room, like, you know, Portal, uh, you know, it's the get out of the room thing and the physics of the portal. But this one, you know, you're walking around, you're looking at things, you can jump up and down. Gives you a little more freedom, which I like, so you feel like you're, you know, you're a character walking around. And uh, the, ch the puzzles are challenging. <laughs> I've been on this one for a while here, Chris. Mm, they're, they're definitely challenging. All right, well, while well, Anthony continues to play the game, poorly, I might add. Hey, 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 <laughs> I'm getting it. Let's go to Kyle and Yellow Knight for our cool app of the week. No, oh, don't get hit by the lasers. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome to the first time we're going to review an app. Now we're going to cover apps of all different kinds, from games to, to tech related stuff, to productivity, to even money managing, because we know that you're interested in all that stuff. So the first one we're doing though is an oldie, but a goodie. Yeah, we're going to go with Shazam. It's on the iPhone, it's also on the Android devices. If you don't know the name of a song that comes on on the radio or in a restaurant or on a video game even, then you can use Shazam to find it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play on a song here in iTunes that say I didn't know the name of. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto Shazam, open it up, and hit the Shazam button. 
So as you can see, it only took it about 20 seconds to actually realize what the song was. Shazam! And what it does is it just takes the loop of whatever is playing, records it, and then converts it and compares it with different stuff all across the internet. First thing I can do is buy it right on iTunes. Just because I want it, I like it, I like that song. The next thing is we can share it. We can connect with our Facebook friends, our Twitter friends. We can look up the lyrics. We can, we can find out artist information. We can even find concert dates and tours. You can go into the My Tag section and see all the songs that you've previously Shazammed and you can find the information about it, even if we, we Shazam something years ago. Shazam! One other thing Shazam tries to do for you is it realizes it's people that use the app are interested in music, is it gives you this Discover tab. What the Discover tab does is it shows you the charts and the search function. So Shazam is not only a tool for discovering music while you're out in public, it's also a tool for discovering music right within the app itself. That's been our first app review. I'm Kyle, and if you have any suggestions for apps that you want us to look at, like productivity apps, music apps, utilities, you know, food apps, just suggest them and maybe we'll take a look at them or, or you can send us a video of you reviewing that app and we'll show it right here. Shazam! Until next time. All right, Northern Basement Dwellers, it's time for you to get your two cents in on a little bit we call Versus. This episode, we're asking you to tell us who you think would win in an all-out brawl between Iron Man and Batman. Tell us what you think, and you could win a sweet prize compliments of Titan Gaming right here in Whitehorse. So send us in an email, or make a video comment on an iPad or iPod or cell phone and send us that. Keep it short, make your best points, because we want to hear from you, Northern Basement Dwellers. We'll show the best entries on an upcoming episode of My Parents' Basement. Round one, fight! So if I was gonna just hazard a guess, quite honestly, I guess people are just pretty much gonna vote for Batman, right? Come on, right. Why would we give it to Batman? Iron Man is protected by a hard shell of awesome metal armor. He's got missiles, the uni beam, all sorts of advantages. Yeah, but it's all to the suit. Batman doesn't wear a suit other than his actual Lycra costume. There's nothing in between him and his boot going into Tony Stark's forehead. That boot's not gonna hit metal. Well, take him out of the suit. If he's not wearing a suit, he can his think of foot a will be bro. broken. He's done it before. Uh -huh. Okay, fine, fine, fine. We're going to leave it up to you. You guys come up with that. We'll drop it for now because we could go on for hours. But right now, though, we're going to go visit a real northern tech cave with our own basement guru, Graham Carruthers. I'm coming to you from a real live northern tech cave. This is Graham Carruthers, and his room is outfitted with all the kind of media you could possibly imagine. All right, so Graham, what have you got going on here exactly? Well, I got my projector up here. It's an Epson projector. It's 1080p, full HD, and pretty much it operates just like a TV would. You know, you can play your video games on it, play your movies, anything off the computer. Was it expensive? You know, I decided I wanted to spend about 2,500 bucks. Is that considered high-end, middle, low? That's probably about middle end. So how much of an issue are bulbs when choosing a projector? Bulbs for mine are about 300 bucks each. The performance kind of goes down as the bulb ages, so yeah, your bulb might last you for 4,000 hours, but you don't buy a projector without being expected to invest a little bit more money at some point. What about your screen? It's from a company called Daylight. It's got the highest gain you can possibly get, so that if you're in a bright room with lots of windows, it can still function properly. So how big is this screen exactly? Uh, it's 110 inches. I figure if you buy the projector, then you might as well go as big as you possibly can. And So it's true, size does matter. Size does matter, definitely. Excellent. What do people need to know about projection screens if they want to get it set up in their place? Starting off, you have to decide, is it going to be something that's fixed to your wall, or is it going to be something like mine, where you can you know, pull it down in front of things? Or As far as picture quality goes, screen gain is the most important feature. This one's a 2.0 gain screen, which is pretty much the brightest. So is brighter better then? Kind of depends on what you need out of it, but you know, you want to maximize the amount of light output because it's essentially going from the projector to the screen and then it's got to bounce back to you. You know, a lot of people project on their walls or whatever, but you need it to reflect back to you. So projecting onto a wall is not as good? 
Not unless you treat it properly first. That's another option for screens. You can buy all kinds of paint. So what would help someone choose a projector? Professional reviews. There's always a consensus on what the best is in that money that you want to spend, no matter what the piece of equipment it is. One thing you'll notice in here is everything's different. You know, I have an Epson projector, Panasonic TV, Yamaha stereo, Oppo Blu-ray player. You know, Sony doesn't always make the best piece of equipment, no matter what. Blasphemy. <laughs> Obviously, we don't want you doing anything with your hands other than holding on to your life. Hi, my name's Erica. Do you ever feel like a widow when it comes to your husband or boyfriend and him playing video games? I know I do. Well, today I'd like to offer my fellow ladies some tips and tricks of grabbing the attention from your husband or boyfriend when playing video games. Look, hon, look at this cat litter box, what it does. Mm. Look at what Kim Kardashian wore to the American Music Awards. Hon, your mom's calling on Skype. Oh, look what your brother said on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. Look, hon, I made your favorite salmon dish. No. Let's do some scrapbooking. Yeah. Watch this video. Huh. Wanna help me fold some laundry, hun? Huh? It's magical and give you kisses. Oh, I love this one. Look at us. Uh-huh. Smudgy will give you huggies. Oh it's good, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, smoochy smooch. Mm. And when all else fails, if you can't beat them, join them. I'm gonna soak you your ass. Kitana. Kitana. Round one. Fight. Africa, Africa. Kitana wins. I love you, man. Round two. Yeah, whatever. Fight. All right, well, all this arguing is making me hungry. So let's go back to our man Kyle in Yellowknife and see what munchies he's cooking up. Welcome to Munchies. I'm your host, Kyle Thomas, and today we are gonna make grilled mac and cheese, or mac and grilled cheese, or an infusion of the famous Kraft dinner and a grilled cheese sandwich. So let's get started. Kraft dinner. I tell you, I could just eat that like it is because it smells so delicious, and I cannot believe that it comes out of a cardboard box. The spatula tastes funny. The next thing, raid my parents' fridge for whatever leftover meat I can find in there. Adding the meat to the craft dinner is an excellent filler and it also cuts back on the carbs in this meal. If you haven't noticed, it's pretty much a carb-filled meal. So now we're gonna do two things to the craft dinner that's in the pot with the cheese on it already. We're going to one, add my extras here, which I got roast beef and the bacon, but I'm also gonna add a bit of flour. And see, what the flour is gonna do is densen that up so that it goes inside the grilled cheese and stays together. It's about half a cup, but really we're just eyeballing this until we think it's dense enough. So we're adding in the meat now. So now that it's good and mixed, we can just let it sit here. An inch thick is, a, is an ideal size for your bread here. Because our toast is so thick, and because our mac and cheese is so thick, I want you to take the two pieces of bread that are buttered side up and flip them over on your cutting board. Punch in that bread a little bit. Let's make a dent in that bread. Why do you ask that I do this? It gives more space to the mac and cheese so that we can actually pack it full of more. So we got our bread, it's all buttered, we made a mess of our cutting board, but don't worry, mom can clean that up. That's what she's here for, right? So let's go ahead and take a, a wad of that craft dinner and make sure that that's in the dents that you made in that bread there. Don't be afraid to use your fingers. You're gonna eat this food, and I'm sure your friends don't mind. You're the one cooking, am I right? I've learned many different techniques for flipping a grilled cheese properly when it's stuffed with something that's gonna spread all over the place. This is tricky. <laughs> Slide that right underneath my sandwich here. Lift it up, and then what you want to do is you want to flip the pan upside down and put it on top of that. Ready? Ready? Here we go. Oh! Wow. I sometimes don't do that very well. There you go. So it's not going to take long for your second side to cook and brown because the pan's already pretty hot. So basically, you got a meal here for 20 minutes. Let's open that up and take a look at what we got inside. A grilled 
cheese sandwich infused with macaroni and cheese. What do I call it? The grilled mac and cheese. Because it's a grilled macaroni and cheese. Get it? Oh, that's beautiful. We're just coming to the end of the show practically and Chris, man, we got a huge eight month season of being indoors that I'm excited about. We couldn't quite touch on everything. So here's a quick rundown of just a few more things that we think are quite hot. Like, you know how much I hated the new DC? Well, you can check out the old DC in the Showcase Presents series. All the old storylines are right in here for you to peruse at your leisure. Excellent. Well, the upcoming Judge Dredd movie is also based on a classic comic book. There was an original one with Stallone. I am the law. And it sucked. The new one's gonna kick ass. Now, here, here in my hot little hands, there's a new app out, Atari's Greatest Hits. So the evolution of gaming, Pong is on here, Missile Command, all the greatest, still the same crappy graphics right in your pocket. My yeah, with The Walking Dead, another comic book based show. This is a TV series, starts on October 14th, the third season. If you like zombies, this is your show. I'm glad you mentioned comic book related series. There's a new one coming out this fall as well, Arrow. It's Green Arrow, kind of small villized on TV. One last thing that I want to bring up is The Raid. This is an Indonesian action movie. It's about cops getting trapped in an apartment building with tons of criminals having to fight their way out. It's awesome. Any movie with the tagline, one minute of romance and 99 minutes of non-stop carnage has got to be checked out. <laughs> it sounds like it's right up our alley. That's it for the show. Thanks for joining us in my parents' basement right here on Northwest Tell Community TV. Don't forget to enter our versus contest and let us know who would win in a fight between Batman and Iron Man. Got any comments, questions, anything you'd like us to talk about? Please drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Anthony. And I'm Chris. Thanks for hanging out in my parents' basement.